What's up guys, Myron Gaines here from Unplugged Fitness. Thanks for tuning into the video. Today, we're gonna talk about muscle hypertrophy. We all wanna look good on the beach, get the chicks, get in shape, and think, hey man, just lift bro, just lift bro. Unfortunately guys, it's not that simple, otherwise everyone would be walking around jacked. But what I've done is, I've created a pyramid for you guys that prioritizes the most important things when it comes to hypertrophy, all the way up to the least important things, AKA subs, LOL again. This pyramid, guys, I adopted it from Dr. Eric Helms. Go check out his content, real good stuff. Um, I switched around some of the things that he has on his pyramid uh, for hypertrophy for what I feel is a little bit more important uh, based on my experiences and my clients. But in general, foundation is the same, guys, and this applies to anyone in the, in the evidence-based community when it comes to hypertrophy, that a lot of these things are universal across the board. Um, which, you know, my changes are very minuscule, uh, but we got, we got all the basics we're going to talk about here right now. So first guys is lifestyle. Okay. And what does lifestyle encompass? It encompasses genetics, sleep, nutrition, stress, all these things are encompassed in lifestyle. And this is number one, most important because before you embark on this journey, guys, you got to make sure you're fucking ready, you know, for lack of a better term, because if you're a crackhead smoking crack every day or you're a drug addict of some kind, or you have shit tier genetics, or you don't you eat a thousand calories a day, or worse yet, you eat like seven thousand calories a day. Uh, you sleep two hours a night. You're stressed as hell because your girlfriend won't bang you. Like these are all things that are gonna 100% detract from the pyramid of gains. All right, so you gotta get this shit in order first. Okay, this is the foundation, guys. So lifestyle. What is lifestyle? Okay, are you minimizing stress? Are you living a healthy life? You know, is your blood work okay? Are you able to exercise without some type of complications where you'll have a heart attack and die, okay? If that's in order, let's talk about your genetics. Do you have great muscle building genetics? There are some guys that can stare at a dumbbell and get 20 inch arms and there's some other guys, like me, that, you know, they've been training for 10, 12 years and they have 16 inch biceps. Yes, it's pathetic. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so genetics do play a huge role, okay? Sleep, this is probably one of the most understated things there is guys sleep if done correctly is literally one of the most anabolic things you can do it is it is literally hgh okay not hgh but it is almost as strong as a steroid it is that important the problem is that in the fitness industry guys here's the reality all right i can't make money telling you to sleep eight to ten hours a night okay i need to sell you stupid supplements i need to sell you training programs i need to tell you hey buy this detox tea and you'll make hella gains, you know, or buy these steroids. Like that's how people make money. They're not going to make money telling you how to make gains off of rudimentary basics that are required guys. Okay. So sleep is that important. All right. It's just that it's not talked about in the fitness industry because it can't be monetized. Next is nutrition. Simply put, man, if you want to grow and you want to look good, you have to have your body firing on all cylinders. And how do you have your body firing on all cylinders? You need to have your nutrition on point. That means adequate protein. That means enough carbohydrates to sustain your training. That means enough fat so that you're actually, your, your hormones are being regulated well and you're not having issues with limp dick. Okay, maybe that's just my problem. But the point is, you need to make sure that your nutrition's on point, guys. And if you don't like carbohydrates, that's fine. I know there's a lot of keto people out there, carnivore, whatever it may be. You just need to eat enough calories to sustain your activity level, okay? There is no best diet, all right? It's just what is best for you. All right, so if you like carbohydrates, that's fine. If you hate carbohydrates, that's fine. But understand that total calories and protein and fiber definitely need to be put into play within a proper nutrition program where you're focusing on hypertrophy, okay? Next, now that we got our lifestyle situated and we figured out that we're not crackheads and we have decent genetics, we're not suffering from some kind of ailment that won't let us lift, and we're sleeping enough and consuming calories, enough calories, Adherence, guys. So adherence is basically sticking to a training program. You can have Ronnie Coleman's 2005 workout plan or Arnold's 1977 workout plan or, you know, any of the best workout plans ever, right? Optimal training plan, whatever it may be. You can have the best coach make program for you. But if you're not sticking to it, then it doesn't fucking matter, guys. I'd rather you do a a bro split where you're hitting chest on Mondays and legs never, then do an optimal program that you're never gonna actually stick to. If you stick to the bro split, that's better than an optimal training plan because adherence is that important. You need to go to the gym to stimulate growth, period. 
So adherence, self-explanatory. Next comes volume, intensity, and frequency. So volume e defined is basically sets times reps times load over time, okay? There are three mechanisms for hypertrophy. There's mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage, okay? So quickly going over them, mechanical tension is the amount of actual load you subject your muscles to during a lift, okay? So if I take 30 pounds and I curl it, that is mechanical tension. I'm, I'm using that weight as a load to put my muscle under stress from the lifting, okay? Next is metabolic stress. This is the, basically guys, this is the buildup of uh, metabolites such as creatine, lactate, hydrogen ions, inorganic phosphate, etc. A bunch of scientific nerdy terms that don't, aren't really that important right now. In muscles where there's a lack of oxygen, all right? And then muscle damage is a damage caused to the muscle during resistance training, simply put. All right, so that's kind of the mechanisms of volume R for hypertrophy. Next is intensity, or how hard are you pushing per set? There's a couple of ways to, to gauge this, which are fantastic, like reps in re, uh, reserve R, or RIR, rate of perceived exertion, okay? Which is basically like a zero is like you're not even trying, and then a 10 is like your one rep max. That's like a true RPE 10, your one rep max. You could not have done another rep or increased the weight whatsoever, okay? Or like an RPE 9 would be like you had one rep left in the tank, maybe, okay? Uh, and then frequency, how often are you training said muscle group per week? The studies show that two to three times per week is superior to training a muscle group only once per week. Brad Schoenfeld's lab showed this a couple years back. And you want to set up your program where you're getting adequate volume, you're training intensely enough, right, to stimulate muscle growth, which guys, you shouldn't have more than three reps left in the tank. So let's say you're doing your 10 rep max, you should be pushing to do eight reps every single time with that load, you know, or seven to seven to eight reps uh, with that load every single time. So you never want to have more than three reps in reserve because you need to push close enough to failure that you actually stimulate a hypertrophy response, a possible hypertrophy response. But at the same time, you don't want to go above and beyond where you're unable to recover from the training and therefore you don't adapt, therefore you don't grow. So it's a very delicate when it comes to volume of getting in the correct amount of intensity, volume, and frequency. And I love frequency. Frequency allows you to, do, to train your muscle groups more often and get better quality sets. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you can do 225 for 10 reps on the bench, right? And you go in there and you do a chest day. You go in there, you do 225 for four sets of, for four sets of 10. Then you go and you do your incline bench. Well, you're obviously not gonna be as strong when you do your incline bench, then your decline, then your chest flies, right? You're, you're just not, you're gonna, cause if you were truly working to a level where you need to be, where you're hitting at least three RIR or seven RPE, then you're gonna be pretty tired by the time you get to incline bench. But if you had done, let's say, four sets of 10, cut it for that day, come back a day or two later, do the incline bench, well, you're gonna be able to lift quite a bit more weight than you would have if you had done it on chest Monday with your bro next to you, right? Because your set quality is gonna go up because you've gotten time to rest, and now you can push that set, get a higher quality set where you're lifting more load for more reps, which equates to more volume, and obviously we know volume is one of the biggest driving forces when it comes to hypertrophy. So this is why frequency is a fantastic way to split up your training in a way where you're able to set up and get better quality sets over time. And better quality sets over time leads to more volume. More volume, as we know, is one of the biggest driving forces for hypertrophy. Next is progressive overload. Simply put, guys, progressive overload is the ability to get better at a given exercise over time. So let's say you start on the flat bench press at 135 pounds, 12 weeks from now, you know, or a, a cycle or so, you should be getting stronger to some degree, whether you're doing more reps, you're doing more sets, you're controlling the weight with better technique, you're able to, um, you're able to add weight over time on the bar. All these are indicators of progressive overload, and there's many ways to measure progressive overload. It doesn't necessarily have to be just adding weight over time. It could be the other things that I mentioned. But you always want to be getting better over time, okay? Next, exercise selection. You want to pick the exercises that are best for your goals. Now, I personally believe, and I've seen the best results with compound lifts, okay? Your squats, your bench presses, your deadlifts, pull-ups, rows, etc. free weight movements, okay? Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that machines are inferior. Machines are actually great because machines help get, uh, a lot of the time, a better contraction because you're not necessarily bracing your core or using so many stabilizer muscles, so you're able to focus more on squeezing the muscle, getting that mind-muscle connection. But I don't necessarily recommend it for beginners because you want to learn these barbell movements and learn 
how to lift in the first place. And then as you get more and more advanced, machines are a great tool to use to augment your training. And they're also great to use later on in your workouts, you start to fatigue so that you can continue to stimulate the muscle with a little bit less risk. In general, you wanna be focusing your movements around compound lifts and then using machines as needed to really hit the muscle at the end of the workout when you're a little bit more fatigued. And then also it helps you concentrate more and machines are great for isolation movements as well. Next is rep ranges. So there's a lot of controversy with this, but the reality guys is this. They did a study back in uh, 2014 and 2015, Brad Schoenfeld and them, two different studies. They found that anywhere between six to 35 reps is gonna build a, a similar amount of muscle mass, okay? Maybe even more, if, if volume is equated. So what really is important is intensity, right? And getting in the appropriate amount of volume. So if you wanna do some sets where you're uh, doing hitting only six reps, versus hitting some sets where you're doing 20 reps, that's fine. It's just that you have to train at the appropriate intensity. Like I discussed earlier with RPE and RIR, you wanna be one to two reps in the tank, okay? On every set, so that you're pushing close enough to failure, but you're not going above and beyond and then you know taxing yourself and setting yourself up to fail so that you don't recover from the training that you're doing. So I would say for practicality reasons, six to 15 reps is a sweet spot, because you know obviously if you lift two low reps, you know, if you lift that below six every time, well, that's gonna be pretty taxing. You know, you're gonna be pretty tired all the time. You're working with heavier loads, a little bit more dangerous, risk of injury goes up. Uh, you have to do more sets to get the same level of volume. You can be in the gym for hours at a time, but at the same time, doing 30 reps per set, well, same thing. You're doing less sets, but you're doing more reps. It's harder to get that really know if you're close to failure, because when you're lifting such light loads, you might fatigue before you're actually getting to that point where the hypertrophy effect might be induced. So you want to stay in that practical range where you can actually feel the muscle fatiguing versus like letting uh, cardiovascular um, limitations limit your ability to lift. It tends to happen with higher rep ranges. So that's why for practicality reasons, six to 15 reps is, is pretty good. Rest time, so isn't as important as people say it is, but it is a fantastic way to control your workouts. And what I mean by that is that if you say, all right, I'm gonna take a two minute rest in between each of my sets with bench press, well, that's good because now you know you have a consistent control that, okay, when I rest this much on bench press, I'm able to lift this much. And then you keep that consistent over time and you'll be able to see true gains. Now, I am a fan of timing your rest periods, but for practicality reasons, recommended with, with a lot of the studies is somewhere between two to three minutes seems to be the sweet spot. Enough time to recover while still keeping the intensity high in the gym so that you can actually push yourself. Because last thing you want to do is be, you know, unless you're a power lifter and you're working with like 85% of your one rep max and you're lifting super heavy loads and you're focused on numbers, you're training off percentages, I wouldn't go over three minutes really. You know, two to three is fine for hypertrophy. And remember guys, when you're training for hypertrophy, you're, you can be a lot more flexible with your training because your goal is to grow. And there's many different ways to stimulate the muscle to grow versus if you're powerlifting, well, you're in that niche, you're focused on getting stronger over time. So you have to work off percentages and keep everything strength-based, right? Performance is everything. For hypertrophy, it's a little bit more forgiving. Performance isn't necessarily everything, but it is a very good indicator of progress. And performance improvement doesn't always have to be increasing load over, the, over bar, as we discussed with progressive overload. It could be doing more sets, doing more volume, uh, using better technique, being able to control the weight better with time under tension, which we're gonna talk about that next. So these are all ways to gauge progress. Next, we're gonna talk about tempo. And I consider tempo to be the least important, well, actually, <laughs> I digress, it is not the least important. We'll talk about the least important thing here after this. But tempo is one of the least important things. Um, I remember back about 10 years ago in the early 2010s, there was like crazy hysteria about time under tension, time under tension. This is the best way to train, best way to train. Well, the reality, guys, is that tempo, you know, when you take like ridiculous pause times when you're like lowering the weight under extreme uh, control, that actually starts to hurt your ability to get quality volume in, right? So like, because you, by virtue of doing tempo type training, you have to decrease your load significantly, okay? So when you do that, your ability to get more volume in is decreased and your ability to recover changes as well. So I only suggest tempo training for, you know, times where you have limited equipment or you're at a hotel gym or you're stuck at home and you can't lift uh, normal loads that you normally would, tempo training could be a great accessory where you're able to take lighter weights and um, get a similar stimulus. You'll have to probably do more sets and more reps to get the same volume that you would have otherwise gotten in a conventional gym 
but it is a great way to work around limitations in the gym. Another time where a tempo could be great is if you have injuries, right? So I know a bunch of guys that when they do bicep curls, their elbows hurt. After a certain amount of weight, they can't, they can't do it. Well, one way that you can still uh, do bicep curls without necessarily getting that ache in your elbow is you can use tempo training where you're slowly decreasing the weight and timing it during your sets. And that is a great way to also work around injuries is tempo. So those are some examples of when tempo can be very beneficial to you, but I would not base my training around tempo given that I have resources at the gym that I readily use and that I'm not injured. I would just stick with conventional training, don't overcomplicate things, count your reps and sets, try to track your rest periods as best you can, and that will do a lot of the work for you. All right, least important thing, subs. And I only put this here because I get asked about supplements all the time. Guys, supplements make at best a very small change in your training and progress, assuming you're doing all this other stuff right, guys. Because at the end of the day, supplements are exactly what they say they are to supplement what you're currently doing. And if what you're currently doing is fucked up BS, then this isn't gonna do anything. This all has to be in order first before you even think about taking supplements, okay? So that's the priority of uh, gains right there, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that, took something away. Now you can structure your training plan uh, based on what matters the most. Remember, lifestyle, genetics, sleep, nutrition comes first, get the rudimentary basics down, Second, adherence, whatever training plan you pick, you need to stick to it, whether it's like a push-pull legs, or upper body, lower body, or even a bro split. If you enjoy a bro split and you like that better than doing uh, push-pull legs or full body workouts multiple times per week, do that, you know? It's better to train so optimally and stick to it than to not train at all. Next, obviously, volume, intensity, frequency. Volume as a refresher, guys. It's reps, time sets, plus load. That is volume over time, okay? And then intensity is how hard are you pushing in between sets? And then frequency, how often are you training same given muscle group, okay? And then progressive overload, obviously getting better over time. And then exercise selection, you know, you wanna base your lifts around compound movements, your squats, your deadlifts, your bench, your rows, pull-ups, etc. And a compound exercise, guys, is an exercise that uh, uses multiple muscle groups to complete a movement. And then rep ranges, for practicality reasons, 6 to 15, but we know that studies show that very low rep ranges and high rep ranges build the same amount of muscle mass, assuming volume is equated. So you want to stick to rep ranges where your risk of injury is low, your ability to get quality volume is high, and you're able to be the most time efficient. And for those reasons, I would say 6 to 15 is the best. Rest time, not as important. Two to three minutes, guys is more than enough time to recover if, you're if your goal is hypertrophy. If you're powerlifting, that's a whole nother thing. Longer rest times are obviously needed because you're, you're focusing on performing at high percentages of your one rep max. And then tempo last, which basically, you know, doing the countdowns when you're lifting, controlling the weight uh, over a uh, deliberate amount of time. You know, you're doing shoulder press and you're slowly bringing it down, which can have some benefits, but I wouldn't base my training around it as it's a temporary fix to maybe an injury, limited gym equipment, etc., so that you can still get uh, a good hypertrophy fixing. Um, next, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and I'll get you on the next one. Peace.